All right, today I want to show you how I did this motion trail effect in Adobe After Effects. I posted this on Instagram and got a lot of requests for a tutorial. So here I am with a pretty straightforward technique. This effect is relatively easy to pull off using only After Effects and the classic echo effect. Now the real magic here is due to the fact that the footage was filmed at a thousand frames per second. It's that high frame rate, extreme slow motion that allows this look to work. Um, we shot with a phantom camera in Venice Beach, but the camera on your phone most likely can shoot in 120 or 240 FPS, and that should be enough to achieve a similar look. So I encourage you to use these techniques and see what you can come up with. All right, a quick background on the echo effect. I pre-rendered this little test here. I'm gonna apply echo. And here's what we get by default. We can change the operator to composite the original in front, and we can change the number of echoes to get more uh, of a trail along the way. We see that nice color change. Um, and then the echo time here is gonna affect how many, uh, how close together these steps are. And as you approach zero, these steps are gonna get closer and closer together until a certain point where there's just no more information. The animation was rendered at 24 frames per second, and there's just nothing in between these frames, hence why we get this stepping here. So this is just to illustrate why we need to film the skate footage at such a high frame rate to get that extremely smooth trail. The first thing we need to do is roto the board. I've got my area here trimmed that I want to rotoscope and it's nice to also just keep a copy of the original below it. We can turn it off and with our section selected we're just going to get right to it. It's not going to be as daunting as you might think. Going to select the roto brush tool, double click on the clip, get our brush size here and just start making a selection and look at that. We are, uh, by the way, in the After Effects Beta 2024 version where we have access to Rotobrush 3.0. It's much better than 2.0. It is AI assisted and it's going to do a pretty darn good job of rotoing the board. We're going to have to make some adjustments along the way. But yeah, look at that. We are getting a super good roto very quickly. And we're just kind of going to watch how it does, make adjustments. The roto brush is basically done. It took around 10 minutes, which is absolutely insane. Um, it, had to, it needed a little bit of work on the trucks and the wheels as they were coming around. And, you know, this is uh, it's good enough for the tutorial. But for the real thing, I spent a little more time on the wheels. This is almost 700 frames. And uh, it helps that uh, it's in slow motion, so every subsequent frame is, is very similar to one another. And also it's a rigid object um, instead of like hair or clothing. So Rotobrush does a really good job here. Um, so what I'll do next is click freeze. So it will kind of render itself uh, in this window here. And then I will export that out as a ProRes with alpha channel to bring into the other project file. All right, we've got our pre-rendered rotoscope skateboard. Uh, layered in the right space on top of the original clip here and what we're gonna do is just go right to the fun part and apply the echo effect we're gonna change it again to composite in front and let's just see what happens if we start cranking up these the number of echoes and there we go right that's that's kind of on the right track we've got that very smooth uh, trail with very minimal stepping visible and uh, it's, it's working as, as it should, as we expect the echo effect to work. Now, here's the thing, the echo effect is working, but it's in screen space, which is correct. That's how, that's how the effect works. It doesn't know that uh, the camera was panning along and that we should see the trail leaving, uh, leaving itself behind uh, matched to the camera motion. So we're gonna have to do a little trick using some motion tracking. With the original clip selected, add the effect Mocha AE. We're gonna launch Mocha, and we basically want to do some motion tracking. Let's grab uh, just a simple square, 
and make a selection somewhere about here. Let's change our track options. So we turn these off. We only care about translation and let's track forward. Tracking is done. We now have a nice clean track of the motion of the ground here. We'll go up to this layer. We can, if we want, rename it track and go ahead and click this save button and exit out of the MoCo window. Now we'll see uh, in this tracking data tab, we're gonna click track data. That's that track we just renamed, click okay. Now we've got a bunch of information here. We wanna do something with it. Let's create a new null object, layer new null object. And let's again, let's name that track to be nice and organized. We're gonna go back to our Mocha here and we're gonna apply, we're gonna export this track data uh, to that null object. So we're gonna export option, transform, choose that null object and then hit apply export. And then if we hit U, we're gonna see that that, um, that track has some keyframes on it now. We're gonna turn off the scale and rotation because we don't care about them. And we're also going to delete any keyframes um, beyond the length of our footage because we don't need them and they're just a bunch of blank keyframes that Mocha gives for no reason. So deleting them to be organized so we only have to worry about what we care about and also just gonna trim that null object to the duration that we care about. And as you can see, we've got a nice null that moves along perfectly tracked with the ground. Now that we have our tracking data, we want to use it to stabilize the footage so that instead of the camera panning tracking with the skater, the background will be locked off like a tripod shot and the skater will be moving through the frame. With this method, we're going to be able to do this all on one layer without any need for pre-comping. So what we'll do first is add a transform effect and we'll place that above the echo effect. We will I'll click the anchor point in the transform effect and pick whip the track position. And it has given an offset, but also made it so that the board is moving through the frame instead of the inverse. What we'll do next is add another transform effect and put that after the echo effect. This is called a transform sandwich. We've got a transform and then another transform. This time we're gonna alt click the position instead of the anchor point and pick whip that same position data. Now we're back to where we started. If we look at it over top of the original, what we're basically doing is stabilizing it with the anchor point and, and then doing the exact inverse motion uh, to bring it back to its position. Um, by sandwiching the echo in between those two, we are essentially getting exactly what we want, where we're leaving the trail, respecting the track position, and we know that it is pixel accurate and it's all on one layer. Now you're probably thinking, okay, but what's up with the weird ghosting in the background? And uh, it was kind of interesting. It's We can see part of this grass is just that the rotoscope incorporated just a little bit of that edge overlap that is kind of revealing what was behind it uh, when we do the echo, but it is a super easy uh, fix. We're gonna add the simple choker effect. We're gonna put that before the echo. Let's just turn off the echo to see the result. Turn this off. And uh, as we crank up the, the simple choker, we can just kind of choke in. So let's try something like three or four, turn the echo back on. And now we've got that beautiful trail that's only coming from the skateboard, not from the background. So turn off, we get that, turn it back on. It's much nicer. Uh, I could also mention that, you know, at this point you could add uh, a, a blur, a directional blur, um, if your footage is not high enough frame rate, some you know some cheats you could do is do a directional blur kind of in the same direction as your as your motion and uh, give it a little bit of that before the echo, and that's going to probably help smooth things out. Um, note that this is just you know it's slow to render, so the more the more you stack up, the slower it is, especially when you have many 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 echoes. But yeah, just some ways to uh, 
to smooth out that trail if you want, but I uh, didn't need it here. So yeah, that's basically it. That's the effect. Uh, as you can see, it's super slow to render and it's because of all these number of echoes. Um, yeah, After Effects is calculating it, you know, each, each echo is just more um, that your computer has to calculate. Um, I think in my real thing, I was up to like 2000 echoes. Let's just put 1000 and see how slow this is. But I needed enough copies to make a smooth trail all the way from the beginning to the very end of the animation. I also rotoscoped the wheels separately and did the same process four times for each of the wheels and then composited that in separately. I also uh, composited a shadow, a little bit of shadow, and um, of course the rotoscope that would be needed on top of the foot as it is layered over uh, moments like here. And of course you're going to want to uh, solo the effect and render this on its own uh, because of how slow this is to render. You're going to just pre-render the board with the echo effect, um, get that exported, bring it back in, and, and then start doing all your compositing. If you are interested in learning more about this, I have this project file up on my Gumroad, uh, nice and organized, and you can see everything that was done for the, the final comp here. A lot of uh, just tweaks, fixes, um, you know, clean up and whatnot, as well as uh, the time remap and color correction and, and all that stuff. Um, so this project file is available to download for five bucks. If you want to check it out, I will put a link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. This was actually my first real tutorial on my YouTube channel. If you like this kind of content, leave me a comment, subscribe, um, let me know, and I will try to do more stuff like this. I'll see you next time.